happy morning uh, dear students uh today uh, i am going to give a small presentation about a topic called whistle blowing and i am definitely uh, sure that you might all have heard about whistle blowing whistle blowing is one of the most effective ways to detect and prevent corruption and other mal practice like uh, if an employee uh, report wrong doing that they believe is in the public interest it is called as whistle blowing and whistle blowing examples can include a uh, criminal activity it could be like a uh, theft or it could be unethical or unjust behavior in the workplace it could be in the form of any kind of uh, discrimination racist discrimination or sexist or a homophobic behavior and uh, the whistle blowers disclosures have exposed wrong doing and fraud and it helped save millions in public funds and avoid disasters for health and the environment and whistle blowing can be done only by a member in the organization and maybe say for example when something is illegal or immoral is happening in an organization and that could be brought into light by a member or a former employee of an organization he can report it to the higher officials and there are uh, various types of whistle blowing whistle blowing can be classified into three personal corporate and government like when a person uh, or a group of persons is subjected to immoral behavior or exploitation then it is called as personal whistle blowing corporate whistle blowing refers to a disclosure about the misconduct on the part of a company and government whistle blowing is like when uh, a disclosure about uh, a government officials or any department in the government when they do something wrong or immoral conduct it refers to government whistle blowing and um, there are several motives of whistle blowing the main are four in number the first one is to enforce ethical conduct see uh, <clears throat> whistle blowing is mainly done to make the person Uh, or an organization realize and adopt ethical behavior they have to follow the ethical principles in their workplace and another important motive is to highlight the dangers like what are the negatives or what could be the possible dangers of whistle blowing that could be pointed out right and the next important uh, motive is the to highlight threat to public and see it a disclosure can be made about the dangers which could be brought for life and property uh, because of a defective product or a technique and the next important motive is to motivate towards morality see mainly the managers has to be inspired the government officials should be inspired to follow or to adopt moral values and ethical practices and um, there are several conditions for whistle blowing uh, the morality of whistle blowing might be viewed from the perspective that the corporations have a moral obligation not to harm anyone may it be the employees or uh, the society on the whole D George he identified five criteria when whistle blowing is morally permitted the first one is the firm's actions will do serious and considerable harm to others the second uh, uh, criteria is that the whistle blowing act is justifiable once the employee reports it to the immediate supervisor and make moral concerns third uh, criteria is that any action taken by the supervisor the employee should take the matter 
all the way up the board if necessary like when the supervisor is not adhering to the words of the employee he can take it to the higher officials if necessary the fourth criteria is that documented evidence must be must exist that would give a reasonable and a partial imp impartial convincing uh, uh, you know matter which is correct and the last important um, criteria is that the employee must reasonably believe that going public will create some change in order to protect the public and it is worth to risk to oneself so if i am taking a risk and it, it should be for the betterment of the public and it should be worth enough to risk it okay so these are the uh, important uh, uh, conditions or criteria for whistle blowing and uh, there are certain situations when uh, the whistle blowing can be justified okay uh, whenever and wherever the product or a service of a firm Uh, will cause harm to the public and uh, wherever an employee feels serious threat to or harm to him or to anybody he should report it to the firm immediately without any further delay and uh, before reporting any subject an employee should have evidence that should uh, convince an observer about the necessary Uh, of whistle blowing and if an immediate boss does not care okay what the employee could do is he could uh, take it to the highest level to present about the uh, the need for an action which is to be taken by the higher officials and um, the next important uh, uh, is we have to talk about the uh, whistle blowers protection act see it is basically an act of parliament which is uh, passed by the indian government which provides a mechanism uh, to investigate corruption and misuse of power by public servants government officials or anybody for that matter when they use their uh, power Uh, in a in a wrong manner or when they involve in corruption so maybe that will, I mean, this mechanism will uh, be there to investigate that and it also protect anyone who exposes alleged wrong doing in government bodies projects and offices and uh, the how did it how did this act come into existence we have to look into it the un convention against corruption to which india is a signatory since 2005 and it encourages the states to facilitate reporting of corruption by public officials and provide protection for witnesses okay and the convention also provides safeguards against Uh, the victimization of the person who is making the complaint because any chance of uh, you know uh, misusing the evidence are there so it is necessary that the uh, the 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 person who is making a a whistle blowing has to be safeguarded so to come confirm with such regulations in 2011 whistle blowers protection bill was a uh, proposed which finally became a law in 2014 and there are certain arguments against whistle blower protection people say whistle blowing is is not good why do they say that the first reason is that uh, the employees uh, what they do is they might find it as an excuse to blow the whistle in order to cover up their inefficiency or incompetency or inadequacy like when they don't perform well or when they are not competent enough to take up a task or when they are not in a position to work properly what they do is they simply blame the higher officials so that chances are there 
so people say that the employees they find it as an excuse to blow the whistle unnecessarily without any reason and um, the second argument against whistle blower is that uh, it is very difficult for the manager to run the company effectively because uh, it, it, it because it is uh, because whistle blower will always have a chance to you know miss uh, appropriate things so uh, the legislation always protect the whistle blowers and their rights on the employees so that is why it's very difficult for the managers to run the company effectively and when we talk about the arguments for whistle blower protection and uh, whistle blower will always bring out the best thing which should happen in the society and when it, when anything illegal or immoral is happening it will be brought into limelight and uh, the second important argument for whistle blower whistle blower is that uh, it 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 gives the freedom of speech like you have the liberty to say anything you want being a democratic country everyone has the free right to speak so that uh, that is the reason why we we encourage whistle blowing and um, we there are some important components of whistle blowing policy the first thing is like as already discussed it should be in the form of a statement a whistle blowing should be in the form of a statement where all the uh, evidences should be uh, you know produced and the second important component is a clear defined procedure of reporting it must be properly reported through proper channel you have to follow that uh, code of conduct when you are reporting a, 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 a an issue to the higher officials and that issue has to be uh, brought to the notice of the uh, well trained personnel who are into this to investigate the reports submitted by the whistle blower and the well trained personnel should have a commitment to take appropriate action against the people who involve in any immoral activity and basically the whistle blower should have some good faith in the uh personal he they should feel that okay if i go approach them i'll get some justice my issue will be solved so that uh, guarantee must be given by the uh, personal these are the important components of whistle blowing policy and um, let us uh, have a discussion about whistle blowing with an example through a case study we can understand a case study of whistle blowing with relevance to india and i think most of you all would have heard about the golden quadrilateral project it is uh, nothing but a project which uh, is uh, which connects all the four major metro cities of india delhi mumbai kolkata and chennai and uh, this was one of the uh, major uh, you know uh, development of uh, the indian uh, uh, transportation sector because it connects all the four me four metro metro cities and uh, this case is all about uh, satyendra dubey he is nothing but uh, uh you know uh, he was an indian engineering service officer and he was the project director in the national highway authority of india at koderma and he was murdered uh, in gaya bihar allegedly for his anti corruption related action in the golden quadrilateral highway construction project So on twenty seventh November two thousand three, on his thirtieth birthday, Dubey was returning from a wedding in Varanasi, and he called his driver to meet him at the railway station. And he reached Gaya railway station at three in the morning, and he found that the car was not able to come because of some battery malfunction. so it appears that that at this point dubey decided to take a rickshaw to reach his home 
when he didn't reach home his driver uh, went to look for him and he found him dead by the side of the road in the suburb of ap colony he had been shot dead and the news ignited tremendous public hue and cry the matter was raised in the parliament and um, the prime minister uh, what he did was he shifted the onus of this uh, uh, investigation from the bihar police to the central bureau of investigation and the cbi they registered a case against the unknown persons under section 120b for criminal conspiracy and section 302 for murder of the indian penal code and various provision under the arms act on 14th december 2003 like what exactly happened why was he murdered and he found out some uh, major issues which happened in the golden quadrilateral project infrastructure project and uh, because he found the first reason was it was a sloppy project report which was not worth and uh, mainly the the people involved in the project Uh, they won the contract on the basis of some forged documents presentation and huge advances were doled out to contractors and uh, basically lnt was the uh, company who uh, who took the primary responsibility of the completion of golden quadrilateral project and what they did was uh, they had been subcontracting the actual work to smaller technology groups which were controlled by the local mafia and every one you know from the government engineers to mnc construction companies every one to local thugs they seemed involved in the loot of public money and what did dubey do see what he did was when he found out that something was not going as per the uh a plan he wrote a letter to his boss nhai project director sk soni and to brigadier satish kapoor who engineer overlooking the supervision and there was no action and so what he did was he wrote a letter to the prime minister and dubey he also sent the same letter to the chairman of national highway authority of india and uh, mr dubey anticipated trouble he found out something was not good and it was unusual and he wrote a second letter again requesting anonymity but it was completely ignored and uh, the prime minister's office didn't bother to investigate or to look into the matter seriously and for an act of murderous negligence the prime minister's office they handed over both the letter and the sheet with satyendra's particulars to the ministry of road transport and highways and at least eight officials they scanned it before passing it on to the national highway authority of india and the end was very very pathetic in 2003 dubey was found dead in gaya so uh, whistle blowing always uh, not always but sometimes it has a negative uh, impact also maybe the person's life will be a question mark or his family will be put for task all that happened and there was a similar case uh, related to satyendra dubey he was another person also was a whistle blower he is uh, mr shanmugam manjunath and uh, he was a sales officer for the indian oil corporation and he was murdered for selling a corrupt petrol station in lakhimpur kheri uttar pradesh and this incident inspired several students of uh, iim iit and what they did was they set up a manjunath shanmugam trust and while working for the indian oil corporation in lucknow uh, shanmugam ordered two petrol pumps at lakhimpur kheri sealed for selling adulterated fuel for 3 months so he ordered the petrol banks to close down for 3 months for selling adulterated pet fuel 
when the pump started operating again a month later he decided to conduct a surprise raid around uh, on 9th, 19th november 2005 and uh, his father was so worried about uh, shanmugam and uh, he was literally trying to approach him uh, but uh, he was he was he didn't reply and so his father he sent an sms stating how were you and there was no reply because that night during his inspection manjunath has been shot dead in the town of gola gokarnath in lakimpur kheri and his body riddled with at least six bullets was found in the back seat of his own car which was being driven by two employees of the petrol pump both were arrested and the main accused the pump owner pavan kumar mittal was held on 23rd november along with seven others so uh, when something is happening around you and you find that it is immoral or you know unlawful or unfair you blow the whistle especially in our workplace so we should be a part of the solution and not the problem so this is a campaign ad which gives us the importance of whistle blowing and uh, thank you so much and catch you with another presentation very shortly thank you